Shoulders a little stretch out. If it feels good to turn the hands out or all the way round, you can do that as well. Maybe a little cat cow. Finding a bit of a roll through the spine. Perhaps a little puppy, taking the hands forwards, pressing the chest down, trying to keep the belly in. It can be a little bit of a bounce rather than a static hold, if that feels better. And then let's find our way back to downward dog. Sucking the toes, pushing hips back and up, reaching down through the heels. Try not to force the knees straight. Go ahead and wag your tail, bend your knees. And then walk your feet towards your hands, finding a fold over your legs, maybe holding your elbows or the back of your head, having a little rock or sway. And then rolling all the way up to standing. Okay. Coming to find your mountain pose. So whatever works for you, feet together or slightly apart. Spreading your toes, placing your feet on purpose. And then lifting up nice and tall through the legs, the spine, the top of the head. Long arms. Feeling Steady and calm, but energised. Let's breathe. Establishing that rhythm for our practice. Working with our ujjayi breath. Four counts in, four counts out, through the nose if you can. The next inhale to lift the arms all the way. Take hold of the wrist, press down to the same foot and lean away. Try not to throw the hips out, just lengthen your side, lean over. Come back to the middle, switch over and find the other side. Back to the middle, looking up to the hands, big inhale as you reach through the fingers and as you exhale, bring your hands down to your heart, maybe dropping your chin slightly, closing your eyes and just taking a moment to decide where the energy of your practice is going to go today. You can always keep it for you or maybe there's something, someone somewhere else that needs it. If you'd like to join me in an arm to open, you're very welcome. We'll take two more breaths and then we'll on our third exhale. Otherwise, be still, 
Three more breaths. Use your next inhale to lift your hips and heels. As you exhale, try and bring your knees to your chest, but not drop your bum. Eyes forward, take a step towards the hands. Inhale, lengthen through your half fold. Exhale, full fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart, reset. Inhale, lift up tall. Exhale, hip and fold. Inhale, look forward, keep that length, keep that forward gaze as the feet go back. Exhale, through your chaturanga. Inhale, through up the dog. And exhale, back to downward dog. Five breaths. So really pay attention, push the floor down with your hands. Press the feet into the floor. Your heels don't have to touch, but have them reaching down. Lift your hips. Try not to force your knees to make your legs straight. Try not to force your elbows to make your arms straight. But find length in your limbs from the ends. Next, inhale, lift your dog. Exhale, compress, but keep the hips high. Come towards your feet. Inhale, through your half fold. Exhale, full. Inhale, all the way up. And exhale, hands to heart. So we've got one more A. I'm going to encourage you to jump backwards and forwards. It just brings more balance into your practice. When you go back, try and land with soft elbows. When you come forwards, try and keep your hips as high as you can. So your arms will be straight. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale, lower the hands, keep the hips high, and back and down through your chaturanga. Opening up through upward dog and pressing back to downward dog. Five breaths, paying attention to the shoulders. Mine are really tight, so mine don't tend to roll into each other. But if you feel like your shoulder blades are starting to kiss, try and press them apart. Try and wrap the armpits to look at the floor or even maybe in towards your ears a little more. Breathe. You can allow your shoulders to rise towards the ears. Just try not to tuck your head into your neck. Use your next inhale to pick up your dog. As you exhale, compress, eyes forwards, come forwards. Inhale, lengthen through your half fold. Exhale, full fold. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, hands to heart. Two Bs. As you inhale, sit to chair, eyes rise to the hands. As you exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, lean into the hands. Come back through your vinyasa. Finding your way to downward dog. Keep the hands in the mat as you step the right foot forwards. Inhale, lift yourself up to warrior one or crescent lunge. Let's try for a handstand vinyasa. So bring your hands down. Keep your right leg as close to your body as you can. Lift the left leg. And then take both feet back to land in your chaturanga. So find a moment in your handstand and then back through. Left side, try and keep the hands in the mat and you bring the left foot up. Use your inhale to rise to warrior one or crescent. And then have a go at finding your way back to down foot. If you like, you can reach your leg out. Play with all the places your hips can be. Keep them square, and then explore, twisting, rotating, stacking, maybe bend your knee, making circles with the ankle. Other side. Find all the places. None of them are right or wrong as such, 
a different and might be a better or poorer choice for different situations. Use your inhale to pick up your dog. Exhale, compress. Come forwards. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair. All the way up. Last one. Inhale to chair. Exhale to fold. Maybe grabbing a cheeky crow for number three. And then feet back through your chaturanga. Upward dog. Downward dog. Right foot forward this time as you inhale, lift up. Options here instead of a vinyasa, switch your legs and your handstand. So land in your warrior or crescent with your left leg forward. Otherwise, whatever works for you. Find your way all the way back to your downward for five breaths. If you want to take a twist, maybe reach one hand back towards the opposite leg. Pull that hip back so you get really long through the side body. Other side. Back to down. Inhale, pick up your dog. Exhale, compress. Come forwards. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair. And hold it here. So lift your chair as much as you need so you can bring your hips beneath you. Not stuck under, not stuck out. Just lifting, holding you up. Feeling your seat beneath you. Arms can be overhead, alongside the ears, out in front. Prayer hands at your heart. Whatever works for you, know where they are. And be all there. Try and keep the front body pulling in at one. Good. Next exhale, let's sit deeper into the knees. Sweep the arms back and bring the body onto or between the thighs. Find the middle of your feet. Lift the arms. As you inhale, sweep the arms forward. Take a full breath here, in and out. And then bring your hands to the mat. Take your knees either outside your arms or onto the back of them as you climb up into your crow. So just concentrate on squeezing your feet together and then pulling them up. Try as soon as you're able to, to get out of the habit of one at a time. Try and do everything at the same time, whenever it's available. Breathe. When it's time to go, through your vinyasa, off you go. Find your way. And if you haven't gone yet, let's go now. Back to down and up. Okay, just creep your right hand back a fraction. Press down into it. Let's roll into side plank. So spin onto the side of the right foot. Lift the left arm. Lift the left hip. You can bring your left foot on top. You can lift your left foot high if that feels good for you. Breathe. Come back through the middle. Make sure your left hand is roughly in line with the right. And then roll yourself over. Keep lifting up. Don't sink down. Push the floor down and then pull up out a bit. Exploring extra bits as they work. Back to downward dog. Okay, we're going to pull forward into high plank, bringing the right knee as far into the body as you can. Round the back, make space, and then set the right foot down. Turn your left toes out a little so you can bring your left heel to the mat. Belly on. As you inhale, reach forwards. Bring yourself up into warrior one. Okay, nice full breaths. Really feeling strong and forward facing in the hips and shoulders. As you inhale, lift up taller. And as you exhale, open out to the left, adjusting your feet and legs as you need. Warrior two. Bend deep into your right knee. 
goes forwards with the toes. Good, let's bring the arms down behind, interlace. As you inhale, roll the chest up, lengthen the arms, gaze goes too. And as you exhale, swim forwards and down. Bowing your head towards your right foot as you lift your arms up. Push into that left foot. Breathe. Humble warrior. Inhaling, come on up, reach the arms back out. Maybe wriggle your left foot forwards a fraction. And whenever you exhale next, draw the hips beneath you as you reach forwards. And then lift that left arm up, roll the left shoulder on top, roll the left hip on top. Don't force the right leg straight. Don't come down to the floor and then adjust everything. Get straight through the um, alignment of the arms, of the hips, and then explore extras if they work. Option here to sweep the right arm, uh, the left arm, sorry, forwards, really keeping that shoulder on top for extended triangle. And then bring your hands down to frame the right toes. Turn the left foot to face forwards. You might want to bring your left foot closer to the right so you can get your heel down. Don't force your right knee straight. Pull your right hip back as you lie long over your right leg. Pyramid pose. You could take your fingers back or even across your back if you don't need your hands for balance. Breathe. Okay, bring your left hand out inside or outside the right foot. And reach the right hand up, finding your twisted triangle. Roll that right hip back. Breathe. Again, you can bring your right arm forwards for an extended variation. Let's keep this right leg as long and straight as you can. You spin your shoulders back to face the mat. Maybe you bend your right knee. Maybe you don't need to as you lift the left leg. Keep the foot flexed and start to explore warriors three. Keep the hips level. And as your body drops down, your legs should lift behind you. Try not to have both head and foot below the hips. Reach out long. Breathe. Okay, as you inhale next, lift the hands, lift the left knee, standing on your right leg. And as you exhale, step out lightly back to warrior two, ready for side angle. Let's bring the right arm to the right leg, reach the left arm forward, roll that left side up. Press into your left foot, reach through your left hand, bend into your right knee. Maybe so much so you can bring the right hand down. Breathe. Inhale, spin through your crescent lunge, lifting the hands back over on those left toes. And as you exhale, twist all the way across, tucking your left arm outside your right leg, working thumbs to heart, or opening the arms wide. Breathe. Bring your hands back down inside the right foot. Just walk your right foot wide. You can stay here in your high lizard lunge, maybe shifting forwards and backwards. Options to drop to the elbows or drop the left knee, or both. You could also maybe thread the arms, or the right arm under the right leg, and then the left arm round. And bind your hands across your back, keeping that left shoulder looking down. Last breath here. And then bring your hands down. Options to try your flying splits. So you might want to hop the left foot in a little. You're going to try and keep your right knee as close to your right shoulder as you can. Remember, you want to bend your arms like Chaturanga. So squeeze your right foot up, keep your right knee in. 
And maybe here, and then step back through your vinyasa. Or maybe squeeze your left foot in, so both feet are flying, both knees are bent. Or extending both legs. And then back through your vinyasa. To down dog. There's a spider on my mat. <laughs> I don't want to squish it. Good. Bring your knees down. Let's do a quick puppy before our first dolphin. So pull the belly and keep the hips in neutral. Take your hand down the front and start to press the chest down. So don't drop the belly. Press the chest. Active, strong, full breath. And then bring your hands back towards you. So once your elbows are down, you can interlace your fingers if you like. For now, just press the thumbs together. As you open the upper back, wrap the elbows under and bring them to the mat at the same time. So if you now want to interlace or have prayer hands, go for it. Press into the mat, tuck the toes, push the hips back. So dolphin dog, lift the hips up and then walk the feet towards the elbows. Maybe going as wide as your mat. Breathe. Give yourself a clearance check. Can you bring your head down without it touching the mat? Really lift up and out of the elbows. And release. Coming down to wherever it feels good. I like child's pose. And take some deep breaths, letting the right side go. Spider went quick on that side. Okay, with or without the vinyasa, finding your way back to downward dog. If you're doing the vinyasa, enjoy it. Don't treat it as a burpee or as a necessary. Okay, so we're going to do our side planks again, and I'll add a few extra legs. You can even make it a wild thing if you like. So press into your right hand, press into your right foot, lift into your side plank. If you like, lifting the left leg, see if you can bring your toes lightly to the inside of the right leg. Don't be on your knee, so either calf or thigh. If you prefer even more, you can try and drop the left toes behind and push the front of the body up for wild thing. Spin back, through the middle, and then over to your left side plank, explore, steady, steady, working through the extras if they're available. Back to downward. Okay, let's come forwards into our plank. So pull your left knee beneath you, keep the hands loaded, and then set the left foot down. Turn the right toes out, heel down, belly on. As you inhale, lift up to warrior one. Breathe here. So really try and draw that right side forwards. Feel free to creep the left foot forwards a bit, but don't lose that right heel. And don't lose the forward facing feeling. Next inhale, lift up. And as you exhale, twist out, adjusting to find your warrior two. Sorry, I'm just working around my spider friend. <laughs> Bring your hands down behind you, interlace. As you inhale, lengthen the arms, lift the heart and eyes. And as you exhale, spin down into humble warrior, bowing your head to your left foot. Lifting your arms, press into your right foot too, to keep your balance. Gonna bring yourself up. Maybe wriggle your right foot forward a little. Press into the feet, reach out through the arms. Next exhale, start to pull the hips back. Roll right hip, right shoulder on top. 
Find your way into triangle. Keep drawing that left hip under. Maybe you can bring the left hand down. Maybe reach your right arm forwards. Bring the hands down to frame the left toes. Turn the right toes forwards. Maybe shorten your stance slightly. Press into the feet for pyramid. Pull the hips back. Long, flat fold over your leg. Straight legs are not as important as a fold from your hips here. Breathe. Take your hands away if you don't need them. And then bring your right hand across, inside or outside the left foot. You spin the left shoulder up. Breathing into your revolve triangle. Maybe bring your left arm forwards. Good. Bring your hands back down. Adjusting everything as you need. Maybe coming up onto the right toes. Maybe bending your left knee a little. As you come up to warrior three. So find a long line from your head to your heel and then keep it as you hinge from the left hip, finding warrior three, keep breathing. Good, inhale, lift the right knee, lift the hands high. And as you exhale, step out wide, come into five, warrior two, ready for side angle, left arm to the left leg. Reach the right arm forwards, roll that right side up, press into your right foot, reach through your right hand, bend into your left knee. Keep bending, maybe you can bring the left hand down. Try not to let the hips hinge. One long straight line. Inhale onto the right toes as you lift up through the middle, through crescent lunge. And as you exhale, twist across, tucking right arm outside the left leg, working into your revolve side angle, keeping the hands working to your heart or opening them out wide. And finding your way. Into your lizard, bringing your left foot a little wider. Maybe down to elbows or knees or both, or right knee, I should say. Maybe taking the arms out wide or wrapping around under the left leg, keeping that right shoulder rolling down. Good. Finding your way back to downward dog, maybe having a little go at a handstand, keeping that left side close. Find your way through. <clears throat> oh, we did flying splits last time, didn't we? So if you want to have a go at that, you can step forward, bring your, this is a really good drill actually, so I totally meant to do that. You could try bringing your left knee towards your left shoulder and then drop down and then extend out and then fly back.
breathing wherever you get to. Give yourself five or six more breaths to explore. Feel free to continue or add extra breaths to your rest, whatever you need. child's pose if you're not. Just bring your left hand back towards your refraction and thread your right arm out underneath it. So thread the needle arms, breathe deeply. Back to the middle and then the other way, threading the left arm out under the right. And then back to the middle. Just bringing your hands both back towards you a little. Tucking the toes, bringing the knees into hip width if they're not. And then really push into the hands. Try and keep belly and legs touching as you push back through the heels and hips. And the knees flow up. So you're in like a floating child's pose or a crouching dog. We're just going to do a few up downs here. So keep belly and thighs as close as you can as you lift the hips. As high as you can, push down through the heels as much as you can, and then bend back down, keeping the knees floating. Two more. Finding your downward dog, maybe bringing your hands back towards you a little so you can get your feet flat. Find fingertips, both hands. And then again, continue to bring the hands back until you feel comfortable to rock forwards and pull back, finding yourself over your legs at the back of your mat. Grab hold of your big toes with your peace fingers. Soften your knees, bend them as much as necessary to really hinge from your hips and bring your body close to your legs. As you inhale, look forwards, long spine. And as you exhale, draw the elbow down to the side, roll the crown of the head forward down. The length of your legs comes from lifting your sit bones. The contraction of the front of your body creates length in the back of your body. So this is very active. Keep breathing. Keep checking in with your weight in your feet. We don't want it all in our heels. Maybe your heels even feel a little bit light. So let's switch the grip. Rock onto your heels and bring the palms of your hands under the soles of your feet. Inhale to start. Exhale, fold on down. So continue to explore forwardsness. Maybe the heels float a little or a lot. Perhaps you can pull them up quite a bit and stand on your tiptoes or on your hands. Breathe. Release your heels. Release your hands. Take hold of your elbows. Have a little sway. Okay, let's come check in with another crow. So try and keep your bum as high as you can. So you're going to come down onto your arms rather than try and lift up into your arms. Okay? So bring your hands to wherever they need to be so they can be flat and strong in the mat. And then look forwards, shift forward, let the arms bend as much as necessary. Maybe they don't need to. Knees onto or around the arms as you squeeze the feet up. Breathe. Release 
your feet down. Take a nice big fluffy fold over the legs. If you want to press them straight now, go for it. If you want to keep your knees soft. It's not so much this wrong or right, it's just whether it's your intention or not and knowing what effect it will have and what the point of the pose is that you're trying to do. Okay, let's bring the feet in as close together as you can manage. As you roll onto your heels, bring your hips down to knee height and either reach the arms forwards or backwards for stiletto skier. Breathe. If you like, you can close your eyes now, but wait till you get to the top. Let's lift the shoulders, keeping the legs bent for chair pose. If you can't tell by my wobbling, I've shut my eyes already. Keep the ribs in, arms can be overhead or out in front. And then push all the way up to standing. And close your eyes if you haven't already. Allow yourself a few steps. To wobble around, keep breathing, be brave. You can always put your heels down or open your eyes. You're only trying to stand on tiptoes with your eyes closed on your yoga mat. You've done way harder things than that. Keep breathing and open the eyes and step out wide onto your mat and we'll work through our straddle fold. So your feet. Or probably about wrist width, maybe just inside, maybe just outside. Um, don't go too wide, okay? Maybe this bit is coming later. Check with your feet either straight ahead or maybe ever so slightly in. Try not to do too much deep folding with your feet out to the side. It'll do funny, talky things to your legs, okay? You can soften your knees if you like, or you can lift your thighs so your legs get straight, whatever works for you. As you inhale, lift up tall through the top of your head and squeeze your elbows together. As you exhale, reach through your chin, forwards first. Keep going forwards, feel your toes, grab the mat, and then start to come down. Try not to feel your weight shift backwards. This is a really good one to do in front of the wall. And if your bum hits the wall, you've probably gone backwards. Film yourself. Learn to know what feelings look like, and what looks like, feels like. It's very hard to really know where we are in space. I don't recommend doing this sort of thing in front of a mirror, because your head will be in the wrong place. So get your phone out, or whatever device you're not zooming on, and see. Good, as you inhale, lift up to halfway, reach the arms out wide, and as you exhale, grab your ankles or your big toes maybe. You can put your thumbs in the mat like a kickstand. When you're ready, inhale to lengthen. Look forwards, lean forwards. And as you exhale, feel all the muscles in your back. Engage as you push the elbows out. Reach the crown of the head forwards and down. Breathe. Resist the urge to take the feet wider just to get the head down. Try and commit to be more forwards in your fold. Inhale, up to halfway. Bring your hands down in front of you slightly and just bend into the knees. If you like, you can bring your elbows to your thighs. If you want to sit more into like a horse stance here, you can lift the shoulders a bit more. Or with hands down or arms reaching forwards, you can come and find like a sumo skier. If you've been skiing, this is kind of like the Oh my god, I've just got off the chair left in the snowplow. <laughs> Reach forwards, breathe. Good. Bring your hands or your elbows back onto your thighs a sec. And then you're going to bring yourself up so your body is on top of your hips, okay? I'm going to head out into middle splits without our hands down to start with. So nice and strong. Just wiggle your feet as wide as you can stay in control. You don't have to have your legs straight. If you do so, make sure that you're super strong in your legs rather than just pushing your knees backwards. Breathe. 
Good, and then with or without the hands, so either hands or elbows, whatever works for you. Find your way down, explore if there's any more space. Keep breathing. Last one. And then pick a leg, any leg, doesn't matter. Wiggle your feet a little closer and spin round, bringing your back knee down and tucking the back toes. So really draw the belly in and try and push your tailbone forwards. We want to be careful here that we don't dump the pelvis forwards and drop into the lower back, especially if we lift the shoulders up. So really pull the belly in and tuck the tailbone. You can have your foot under your knee, in front of your knee, or bring it back so it's behind your knee. Do what you like. Just explore and breathe into that probably quite intense sensation through the front of the back hip, back thigh. If you like, you can make it even more intense by trying to squeeze the back foot in and perhaps taking hold with one or both hands. Really keep the lower belly active and be aware of your pelvic tilt here. If you've got your back foot up, release it slowly, no elastic bands. And then you could shift back into half splits with the foot down or front toes lifting. You could push back up into a pyramid if you prefer. Or you can head on all the way out into whatever your front splits looks like today. Keeping the hips square, adding blocks where you need. Breathe. Be light on your hands. Or take them away. Good. Carefully come through the middle. Bring your feet a little closer as you spin all the way around to the other side. Back knee down. Toes tucked. Belly on. Pelvis, uh, pelvis in neutral. So just be careful that you haven't tipped it forwards. You probably won't be able to tip it backwards. But be active and aware. And you bring the shoulders up. Keep breathing, keep engaged. Maybe squeeze the back foot in, taking hold with your hands. One or both. So release the back foot carefully down. And then you can pull back to your half splits, toes up or down. Up to your pyramid, or out into your full splits, finding what you need, paying real attention to that back hip. Don't let it spin out just to get the bum down. Breathe. Good, down onto your bottom. Take your feet out wide and we'll work through pancake. So you want to hinge from the hips in pancakes. So you may want to bend your knees so that you really can. We're trying to get our ribs inside of our thighs, okay? So maybe bring your thighs up to find your ribs. Bend your knees, flex your feet, grab hold of them. As you inhale, lengthen through your spine. Feel that magnet between your belly and thighs. And as you exhale, elbows out to the side, chin forwards beyond your feet. If you can start to Feel your body nestling down between your thighs. You can explore, pushing the feet out, legs longer, wider. But really try and come down flat. We want to avoid the head dropping and the back popping up. And then bring the chin down rather than the face. Breathe. You should be able to stay where you are without the death grip on your feet. So maybe do a little check. And you can bring your hands to the middle. If you've got blocks or something more suitable, then grab them for sure. Um, obviously, you probably should have had them already, but you can come back here in a sec. Or maybe try your fist. One potato, two potato, and then rest your forehead. 
or maybe one fist, or both hands flat, or maybe the floor. Breathe into it. So lift your head a little, just enough to bring yourself all the way over the right leg. Keep both toes standing tall, both sit bones down. So maybe you can hold the right foot with both hands, check in with your left shoulder, left elbow, try and get them to drop down. This is a fold, not a twist. Breathe. Good. Come back through the middle, just pause a sec, reset, and then head over the other way. Again, really paying attention to that inside elbow, shoulder, trying to get them to drop down rather than twist up. Both feet lifting, or toes lifting, I should say. Both sit bones grounded. Good, back to the middle. Draw the belly in and up. As you walk your hands in, bringing your shoulders no further than on top of your hips. So only be straight up. If you can stay forwards a little, then stay forwards a little. And then if you're in quite a wide straddle, you might want to close it up a little, or you can keep it where it is. Hands flat or fingertips as far in front of you as you need to do. We're going to try and lift the feet, okay? If your bum stays down, but your feet lift up. You can point or flex the feet. Draw the belly in and up, lift your pelvic floor, and then point or flex the toes and see if you can lift them up. You can do one at a time, or both together. Breathe, release, give them a wobble, chuck an elbow into your thighs if they're cramping. Okay, this time we're gonna go for bum lifts. So now we really wanna be careful we don't throw the shoulders back, okay? So bring your hands down either side of your right leg, Oh, my hips are crampy. Get ready to either point or flex the toes. You're going to push into your hands, but before you try and straighten the arms, you want to pull the hips back, tip the shoulders forwards, and then lift up. Okay? It'll give you much more lift. If you've got blocks, you can put them under your hands to make your arms longer. So lift up, lean forwards, and then push into the hands, push the hips back, and maybe your legs will float, feet will float. Breathe. Come on down, and to cramp pummeling, Woo. other side, lift up, fold forwards, suck everything in and up and back, and fly. We definitely need to do that more often. <laughs> Come long ways on your mats. <clears throat> Bring the soles of your feet together, and either shuffle your hips forwards or your heels back, Take hold of your feet, but try not to crush them. Remember, we're trying to open the soles of the feet up towards us, so we don't want to squash them together. I like to hold my ankles. And then really try and press the knees down. As you lift up tall, feel the muscles in your back. Engage. Breathe. Good. Try and stay as tall as you are when you let go of your feet. Be careful you don't go flying backwards. Reach the arms out in front and then try and close the knees up, keeping the thighs as close to the body as you can. Breathe here. Feel the pull of your legs and the push of the muscles in your back, closing that gap between your body and legs. And then you can either pull the toes up Pull the heels up or lift the feet up. If the feet come up, you are going to rock backwards. I expect to find your sit bones. That's okay. Just try not to fall apart. Try and stay stuck. Stay as a nice, neat little package. Just slightly more backwards. Keep breathing. Play with pointing the toes or flexing the feet or that funny in between floyd, Barbie foot. You can lift your feet a little if you like. Just don't open out. Not because it's wrong, it's different. 
Keep breathing, last one. Cross the ankles, roll over through your vinyasa. And back to downward. Good, and from here, bring your hands back to about halfway along your mat. You can have a go at jumping through. So remember, the key here is to go as high as you can so you've got the most time to sort yourself out as you fly through your arms. It's all relative. <laughs> Try and keep your hips high. Try and bring the ankles through, cross if possible. Keep the bum up. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Legs out in front and then sit down. Do your best. The loads will get better with practice. And it's not exactly essential to life, so don't worry if you never manage it. Okay, let's bring the hands behind, fingers facing in. We'll come into reverse tabletop. So bring your heel back in towards you. Probably not really, really close. You might want maybe a bit of a wider angle in your knees. When you're ready, push into your feet, push into your hands, and then lift yourself up with the back of your body. So feel, the back, feel your back, your bum, your hamstrings, your calves, everything. Push the front of the body up and find your tabletop. Feel free to just walk the hands and feet around or rock to you find that sweet spot. And breathe. As we come down, we're going to try and pull the hips back through the hands, keeping them lifted. You can keep your heels down. Or maybe you can float them up. <sighs> Sit back down. And then shuffle forwards a little if you need. You can do what we just did again, reverse tabletop. Or maybe try a reverse plank. What we want to really try and make sure is that our bum isn't dropping down. Okay? So maybe do one leg straight, one leg bent, and then switch. Or if you can do both legs straight, try and roll the knees in to kiss. So your big toes come down to the floor and really press the hips forwards. We want to avoid the legs falling out to the side as we push the hips, because it does weird things in the pelvis. Okay, so same arms, same active back engagement, and then either bent legs or straight legs, press the front of the body up. Breathe. Come on down. Take a moment for a tiny fold forwards. And then we're going to shuffle the hips towards the heels, heels towards the hips. Knees up to the sky. If you can hold your ankles on the way down, great. Don't worry if you can't. Find your way onto your back. Your feet maybe are a little wider than the hips, up to you. Keep your knees in line with your feet. Don't let them go wider. Feel your inner thighs pull all the way around to the back of your legs. Hold your ankles, press your hands into the mat, whatever works, push the front of your body up into your bridge. And when you get the clearance, try and roll the outsides of your shoulders underneath. Breathe here. You can interlace your hands, you could bring your hands under your back, whatever works for you. Breathe. You can say working with your bridges if you like, or if you want to explore up to wheel. Remember, use your legs as much as you can before you straighten your arms out, before you even try and straighten your arms. You want to push your heart to the head end of your mat. So legs up in your bridge, maybe pause on the top of your head for a little bit more legs, and then push up and forwards. Breathe into it. Feel free to use tiptoes if it feels like the right space. Finding your way down. Doing whatever counter feels right for you. So you could do the traditional Ashtanga shoulder sand and plow pose. You could do a more chill waterfall. Happy baby maybe. 
or a current favourite of mine is a very active forward fold, arms overhead and trying to bring your toes towards your arms and then roll your hips back down into the mat. <laughs> it's not particularly relaxing but it's definitely a counter to a back bend. Whatever you like, five more breaths. And then, starting to rock and roll yourself forwards and backwards, finding your way onto your bum, holding the boat for five, four, three, two, one. Cross over through your vinyasa and back to down. All right, we'll finish off with our pigeons. So let's reach that right leg all the way out and then swing it forwards, right knee to right wrist, right foot towards the left wrist. Keep it flexed. Try not to yank your leg around with your arms. Creep your left foot back, belly on. You could stay up high in the pigeon or you could walk out long, going forwards to bring you down and staying here. Or if you want a little extra twist, you could try reaching your left arm out under the right and take the right arm all the way around behind, maybe finding the right foot. You could stay here in the twist, or maybe once you've got the bind, take the left arm back out in front again. Carefully lifting and lengthening, finding your way back up and then sitting onto the right hip, swinging the left leg all the way around, tucking into your half lord of the fishes. So right elbow around the left knee, try and get that left hip to sink back down and then wrap the left arm behind or press the fingertips lightly into the mat as you lift up tall through the top of the head. Feel free to take the right elbow outside the left knee or add a bind, threading your right arm under your left leg, connecting the hands. Untangle. Keep your legs the same, take your shoulders the other way. Coming back to the middle. Options, you can do cow face, sliding this left leg off to the right, trying to stack the knees, and then add any arms that work for you. Or I'm working on double pigeon at the moment. So shuffling that right foot forwards a bit more, and then trying to stack the shins, stack knees and ankles, and breathe into it. These aren't like doing the same thing. Um, the purpose of our closing sequence in our rocket is to take a little bit more time to just stretch rather than a lot of the other hip postures in the practice which are definitely very strengthening. Um, that being said, if you are quite open in the hips, you want to be careful where you're going, you want to pay attention. Don't just passively collapse into space. Our Ashtanga, our rocket practice is meant to be a connection to our power, not sleepwalk through an easy peasy bunch of pretzel poses. Wherever you are, Carefully gather yourself up, spin back long ways on your mats if you're not, and find your boat. Find whatever boat works for you, feel free to go wide, long, low, but remember on the next inhale you want to come back up, and cross the ankles, roll through, find your way back to 
downward dog. And then we'll reach the left leg all the way up. Pull it forwards. Active, no collapsing. Find what you need here. Belly on as you lift up tall and then take all of that length forwards and down. Maybe reaching the right arm out under the left. Maybe wrapping the left arm around behind to find the left foot. Staying in your twist. We'll bring the right arm forwards again. Lifting and lengthening as you rise up. Down to the left hip, bring your right leg round. Tangle into your half dog. So hugging right knee with left elbow, getting the right bum to drop down. And then wrapping that right arm behind or fingertips lightly in the mat, try not to collapse into your hand. Maybe you take your left elbow outside your right knee. Maybe you thread the arms and bind the hands. Stay tall and breathe deep. Untangling. Take your shoulders the other way. And then bring yourself back to the middle. Either cow face, sliding that right leg across, or double pigeon, stacking it on top. Whatever you need, breathe into it. <clears throat> and then gathering yourself back up. Finding your boat. Let's find a tiny tuck boat. Press the belly flat as you reach back through the shoulders and let the legs lower in front. They can be bent or straight. Really press that belly down. Don't let it go. From your middle boat, you can explore your low boat. Either staying on the sit bones or bringing the middle back down as well. And then let yourself flatten right out. Feel free to finish up with any final shapes that work for you. Or if that's it, add any extra layers and get ready to settle into your Shavasana. If you have props or pets available, grab them now. Shavasana is just as important as our asana. It still is an asana, it's still a posture. Taking this time in stillness is the bridge between our physical practice and our spiritual practice through our meditation. So this isn't a nap. This is a chance for us to <coughs> notice the stillness in our body after all of that movement, the steadiness in our breath, and how that translates into the quietness of the mind. Just like standing on your head, standing inside of your head without chasing after every single thought that pops up, takes just as much practice. So don't Worry, don't rush to the end. Enjoy the journey. Every time you step onto your mat, there's a chance to learn a lesson. Remember, life is not a dress rehearsal. 
Inviting it to settle also. Not to stop or turn off. Just trying to become an observer without reaction. Thoughts and distractions come and go without following as you let yourself rest. You did the best you could today, and that is always enough. You feel a softness start to spread through the toes, feet, ankles, legs heavy, and your knees, bottom, hips, relax. All the way up your spine, your whole back, shoulders melting down, your belly soft, and your chest open. The length of your arms, relaxing, releasing your elbows, wrists, hands, fingers, your neck and throat free, letting go of your jaw, lips, teeth, tongue, and your whole face soft. Cheeks, eyes, forehead, the back of your head, your whole body soft. Heavy and relaxed as you bring your attention in. Keep your resting at the space between your eyebrows or in the heart center. Starting to bring your attention back to your breath. Feeling that cool inhale fill you up. New space, new energy. And that warm exhale, carrying away anything that no longer serves you. As you feel each breath, bring a little more energy in. Feel it start to build, start to spread. Down the arms to the fingers, down the legs to the toes. Finding a little wiggle. And a little bit more. As you reconnect your mind and your body with your breath. 
shifting your attention, bringing back movement, piece by piece, toes to nose. Maybe stretching all the way out. Tucking all the way in. And then giving yourself a big hug. And say thank you to you for this time today. Time to explore, time to connect. Facing challenges with courage, kindness, playfulness and patience taking all of that with you along with the peace and calm that you've created into the rest of your day, into the week. Keeping your eyes closed if you can, carefully coming up to a comfortable seat. Watch your there, just rolling the head side to side, stretching out your neck. Next inhale, shoulders to ears. Exhale, drop. Two more. And bring your hands to prayer at your heart. Just taking a moment to remind yourself where the energy of your practice is going today. Locking it in for you or sending it out into the world. like to join me in and on to close, you're very welcome. Inhaling. Oh. Bring your prayer to your forehead. Always think good thoughts. Your prayer to your lips. Always speak good words especially to yourself. And sending your hands to your heart. Always do good things. Opening your eyes. Namaste. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for practicing with me. I hope you enjoyed it. Please remember you can keep in contact with the addresses on the screen. I'd love to hear from you. Namaste.